you've drawn me a picture. Thank you, Jack. It's time for maths with Mr. Taurus. That's very unique, Jack. Thank you very much. National 2 art for you right there, folks. Here we go with chapter 3, lesson number 5, working out the equation of a straight line. But this time, boom, boom, boom. Unlike the last lesson, C, the y-intercept, will not be given. Ooh, you're so mean. So, you know already the equation of a straight line is, say it with me, y equals mx plus c. What does m represent, Daniel? The gradient, well done. M is your gradient. It is a measure of the steepness of the line. And C shows us the y-intercept. Perfect. In other words, just where the graph crosses your y-axis. If we are having to write down the equation of a straight line, well, we need to know both the gradient and the y-intercept. In the lesson before this, that is what we were doing, but I gave you C because I'm so kind. But in this lesson, I'm taking C away and you have to work it out. What do we do then? Well, good question. What do we do? We have to work C out. So when the y-intercept C is not given, what we do is we substitute in both the gradient, once we work that out, and one of the points into the straight line equation, y equals mx plus c. If we substitute in the gradient and we substitute in one of the points, well, that'll be our x value and our y value. So we're subbing in x, y, and m. You see that the only thing missing is c. So because that's the only thing left, we can rearrange that equation then in order to work out what c is. Once we know C, we can substitute in that, along with the gradient, back into our equation, Y equals MX plus C. So let's try some examples. Example one, work out the equation of this red line. So we're thinking for this, we have to work out the gradient and we have to work out the y-intercept. Well, the gradient's easy enough because we've got these two points. So because we've got these two points, we can use our equation m, the gradient equals y2 take y1 over x2 take away x1. So the first thing we're gonna do is write down these two points. We've got two, five, and we've got four, nine. With each of these points, there is an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, it's alphabetical, and with this coordinate here, we've got an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, so below them, just write x and y, x and y. Call one of them point one, so I've got an x1 and a y1, and call the other one point two, so I've got an x2 and a y2. Our equation, once again, is, you got it, so replacing these y2 take away y1 with the numbers, we would have 9 take away 5. And in the bottom, x2 take away x1, we would have 4 take away 2. Woo! If we work that out, 9 take away 5 is 4. 4 take away 2 is 2, so we've got 4 over 2. We do not leave it as that because we all know that 4 divided by 2 is 2. Brilliant. So that is our gradient. Just remember, we're aiming for the y equals mx plus c, but we have to know the gradient and we have to know the y-intercept. So the gradient, we now know that. It's 2. The y-intercept, in order to work that out, well, in the last lesson, we saw where the graph was going through the y-axis. But for these examples, we can't. I mean, we could always extend the line and work it out from there, but the graph is not always drawn to scale. So what we do is we substitute in both the gradient and one of the points in order to work C out. So we have y equals mx plus c. What we do now is we replace m with what we know it to be. We know m is 2, so we can replace m with 2. And with the x and the y, we just take one of these points, either the 2, 5 or the 4, 9. I'm going to use the 2, 5. So if I'm using this point here, we know the 2 is the x value, so we replace the x with 2. And we know the y is 5, so we replace the y with 5. So y is being replaced with 5, m is being replaced with 2 because we just worked that out, and x is being replaced with 2 as well because we've got that there in that point. The only thing we have left here that is unknown is c, so we can now work c out. 
So 5 equals 2 times by 2 add on C. Oh, no, 2 times 2 is 4, so it's 5 equals 4 add C. Meaning then, 4 adds something is 5, and we know that something is 1. So we know the value of C then has to be 1. If we used the other point instead, if we used 4, 9, we would still get the same value of C because it's still the same straight line. So it's still the same equation and we'd still have C to be 1. Because we know M is 2 and we know C is 1, we can then replace them in this equation, replace M and C. So we would end up with Y equals M is 2. So we'd have Y equals 2X plus and C is 1. So y equals 2x plus 1 will be our answer. Yeah! Example 2, work out the equation of this straight line. So it's a little harder to tell where this one's going through. It's not with the boxes. We can't just follow them back and think, oh, it's dead easy. We can tell from that. It's a little harder. So once again, we are given two points. So again, we can think about working out the gradient first of all. So we've got negative 2, negative 2, and we've got 4, 1. These are our points. Just remember, we've got an x value and a y value. Again, for this point, an x value and a y value. It's alphabetical. Call this point 1, so x1, y1. Call this point 2, so x2 and y2. Once again, it makes no difference if I called this point 2 instead and called this point 1. I end up with the exact same gradient. If you substitute the values in then to our gradient formula, y2 take away y1 over x2 take away x1. We will end up with y2 take away y1 is 1 take away negative 2. x2 take away x1 is 4 take away negative 2. When you take away a negative, it becomes add, so that's really 1 add 2. And this is 4 add 2, meaning we end up with 3 over 6. And we all know if we simplify 3 over 6, we can divide the top and the bottom by 3 to give us the nice, simple fraction a half. So, in our equation, y equals mx plus c, we now know then that m is a half. Bum, bum, bum. But we need to work out c. That's what we want. So in order to work out c, because we can't tell where it's going through our y-axis, we have to use one of these points and the gradient. So substitute in both the gradient and the point in order to work out c. So, the straight line equation, y equals mx plus c, we can now replace m with a half because we know the gradient is a half. And we can replace x and y with either negative 2, negative 2, or the 4, 1. It doesn't matter which one you are using. I'm using 4, 1 because a lot of the time I like to avoid the negatives. I think negatives make it ever so slightly harder. So I'm sticking with the positive numbers. So y is 1, so it becomes 1 equals, remember m was a half, so it's a half times by x, but x here is 4, so it's a half times 4, add c. Half times 4 means a half of 4, so you'd have 1 equals, half 4 is 2, so it's going to be 2 add c. To get the c on its own, we would subtract 2 from both sides, so if we take away 2 from this side, we're left with C, and if we take away 2 from the left-hand side, we would end up with negative 1. So negative 1 would equal C, and if you flip that back to front, C equals negative 1. So we've worked out M, M is a half. We've worked out C, C is negative a half, so we can replace M and C in our straight-line equation, giving us the answer of Y equals 1 half X plus negative one. And remember, when you add a negative, it's the same as just taking away. So we can write y equals a half x, take away one. Woo! That's our answer. Example three, work out the equation of this line. So once again, we have two points. We've got five, four, and we've got nine, negative eight. In order to work out the gradient, we need to use the gradient formula. y2 take y1 over x2 take away x1. So label the points. So we've got x and y, x and y. Again, it's alphabetical. Call one of the points point one, so x1, y1. Call one of the points point two, so x2 and y2. If you sub these values into m equals y2 take y1 over x2 take away x1, we will end up with negative eight take away four over x2 take away x1 will be 9 take away 5. Negative 8 take away 4 gives us negative 12. 9 take away 5 gives us 4, so we'd end up with negative 12 over 4. Again, don't leave it as that. If we get 12 over 4, it means 12 divided by 4. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. 
But because one of the numbers is negative and one of them is a positive, well, our answer will be a negative. So we'd have m equals negative 3. So we now know the gradient. Again, the whole thing is saying work out the equation of this line. So we just need to work out m and c. We've got m. We know it's negative 3. Woo! We just need to work out c. Again, we can't tell where it's going through the y-axis. We extended that line up and 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 up. Then we still wouldn't be able to tell. We could have a rough guess, but we wouldn't be able to tell exactly. So to work it out, we take our straight line equation and we substitute in the gradient that we just found and one of the points. So y equals mx plus c, replace m with negative 3, and replace the x and y with either the 5 and the 4, or the 9 and the negative 8. It makes no difference which one you're using. You will get the exact same value for C. I'm going to use the 5 and the 4 because, again, I'm just avoiding the negatives. So, uh, Y is, well, have a look at that. If I'm using 5, 4, Y is 4, so it'll be 4 equals. M is the gradient, which is negative 3. And X is just this X value from the point I'm using. So it's the 5. So 4 would equal negative 3 times by 5 plus c. What's negative 3 times 5? Negative 15! Good, so 4 would equal negative 15 add c. We are needing to get c just on its own, so to get rid of that negative 15, we would add 15 to that side. But because we've done that on the other side as well, we would have to add on 15. If we do that, we will get c just on its own. So 4 add 15 will give us 19. And we'd just be left with C here. So 19 would equal C. And if you flip that back to front, C would equal 19. We have worked out M. We have worked out C. We can sub them into the equation. So we would have Y equals replace M with negative 3. So we'd have negative 3X. Remember, X and Y just stay as they are in the equation. And C, the Y-intercept, was 19. So... Our answer is y equals negative 3x plus 19. Woohoo! I'm enjoying this. Me too. Here we go. Example 4. Ah! I'm not enjoying this. There's no graph. Yes, but even though there's no graph, we're still following the exact same steps. Example 4. Work out the equation of the straight line that passes through 10, negative 1, and negative 5, 5. You're right, there is no graph, but we're going through it the exact same way, so do not let that put you off. First thing we need is to work out the gradient, so write down the two points and label them x and y, x and y. Again, it's alphabetical. We have 10, negative 1, and negative 5, 5. So call this point 1, so x1 and y1, and call this point 2, x2 and y2. Again, if you call this point 2 and this point 1, it makes no difference. You get the exact same answer. We end up with then, for the gradient, y2 take y1 over x2 take x1 becomes 5 take away negative 1. And x2 take away x1 becomes negative 5 take away 10. If we work these out, well, 5 take away negative 1 becomes 5 add 1. And that then would become 6. And negative 5 take away 10 is negative 15. Take the fraction, ignore the negative. We'll get 6 over 15. We can divide both of them by 3. And if we do that, that will give us 2 fifths. Because 6 is a positive and 15 is a negative, well, if you have a positive and a negative, the final answer will be negative. So the gradient is negative 2 fifths. So y equals mx plus c. We know m then. The gradient is negative 2 fifths. It's just c that we have to work out. How do you go about working out c? Substitution! Perfect. We want to substitute. So we substitute in the gradient into y equals mx plus c. But we also sub in one of the points. We can either use the 10 negative 1 or the negative 5, 5. The one I'm going to be using is the 10, negative 1. But if you chose this, the negative 5, 5, it makes no difference whatsoever. Just remember, the 10 will be the x value and the negative 1 will be the y value. It's alphabetical. So what we do then is we'd have y equals mx plus c. So y equals would become negative 1 equals m is the gradient of negative 2 fifths and x is 10. So it's negative 2 fifths times by 10 plus c. Working out negative 2 fifths times by 10. Well, really, that means negative 2 fifths of 10. 
ignoring the negative, if I work out two fifths of 10, to work out a fraction of an amount, divide by the bottom times by the top. I'll say it again. Divide by the bottom times by the top. So take the 10, divide that by the bottom. So 10 divided by five gives us two. And if we then times by the top, so the two that we got when we divided, we times that by two. Two times two is four. And we've also got this negative. So we would have negative one equals negative four plus C. Again, 10 divided by five is two, times that by the two is four, and we've got the negative. So that's where the negative four comes from. In the order to get C just on its own, we need to get rid of that negative four. How do we get rid of the negative four? Well, we add four. So we can add four at that side, getting rid of this. And it'll leave us with C, but because we added four on the right-hand side, we have to add four over here. So negative one add four gives us three. So we'd have three equals C. And if we write that back to front, then C would equal three. So we know the gradient is negative two fifths, and we know C is three. So our equation becomes Y equals negative two fifths X plus three just replacing M and C with what we found them to be. Woo! Try some of these questions then in the TJ National Five books, page 59 onwards, and it's exercise 6.6, .6, just working out the equation of a line when C is not given. Remember, all you're doing is following the same steps as in this lesson. Work out the gradient, substitute the gradient and one of the points into Y equals MX plus C, rearrange to get C, and then once you know M and C, sub them into Y equals MX plus C. Easy as pie. Have fun. See ya. So long. Bye.